In this video, first-year graduate students in occupational therapy at Jefferson College of Health Professions share their perspectives on what they learned by participating in the creation of an educational exhibit on Second Life. We met in the OT Center on, in the virtual world in Second Life. And it was really interesting. I thought, this is really cool, actually. And then, once we took a tour around this adaptation home in Second Life, I got a real glimpse of what practical applications it really had. So far, we're working on home adaptations. There are other environments that we can work to adapt to help people engage in activities such as workspaces, institutions, hospitals, the list goes on. So we're starting with home adaptations in Second Life. And the three uh, challenges that we're working on right now are low vision challenges, cognitive challenges, and low mobility. So, so we have uh, developed, basically built through the virtual world, um, adaptations that someone can do in real life. So through a virtual context, virtual environment, someone can actually see firsthand the kind of modifications they can make to their own home regarding those three different challenges. And we've done them in a unique way where you can do things like click on a light switch and a scene will appear in front of you of a living room that has been adapted for someone with low vision. And that's the whole point. Key here in the OT adaptation home is helping people participate mm -hmm. in the, whatever they want to do. And this is just another great way to educate people because there's a lot of people who are very interested, which I've learned, in virtual worlds more than you really think there would be. I've met a lot of people in my experience in the virtual world who never knew what occupational therapy was. And I think Second Life is a great way to teach people because there's so many modes of um, ways to educate people in Second Life. For, um, so there's ways to read, listen, and then there's also they can just explore on their own. And it's kind of a great way that they can just go in when they have free time and look at these things and kind of be on their own pace. Sometimes when you listen to it, when someone's talking about it, they may not explain it the way that you understand it. And I think this is a great way for people who learn, who have different learning styles, to really get a good grasp of what occupational therapy is. Um, well, this semester, actually, I'm taking a class called Environmental Competence, and we're learning all about ways to adapt the environment, whether it be the physical environment, um, such as rearranging a desktop so it's more suitable to someone's um, ability to reach for the mouse, for example, or a social environment, such as, you know, adapting their transportation modes or the people in their environment, having them available or not available in ways that can help them do the things they enjoy doing each day. It's just been a great experience because I've been bringing these ideas and what I've been learning in class to the occupational therapy home that we have in Second Life and um, it's brought and I've learned a lot too by building these things and kind of talking with people in there and people have come into the home and said you know my mother my father I use this in my home or this is a great idea for my home and it kind of reassures that what I'm learning in class what I'm doing in the house what people are saying it's kind of all bringing everything together and really helping me to see that what I'm learning can actually be applied to the real world. You know, it's really strengthened my uh, understanding of the classes. Um, a big thing that we've been going over in the classes now is the fact, just kind of going through occupational therapy as well as the rest of healthcare areas um, through the time, and now we're kind of at a pitch where we're switching from a more medical model to a more community or also called ecological or social model. So it's just a different view of healthcare that occupational therapists, contemporary ones, are, um, are viewing healthcare now. So what that means is, what I found interesting is, you know, when I was first learning about this, I thought, well, I don't know about that. You know, medical model is just what we all understand. So through the medical model, we understand disability as like a problem within the person, whereas a social model we view um, the problem being like the social response to the disability and mm -hmm. like uh, barriers in the v environment that keep someone from actually uh, participating in their occupations, therefore they are disabled in that environment. So I thought that was cool because take someone with spinal cord injury 
he's in a wheelchair, through the medical model, that person will always be disabled because they'll always have that lack of ability to walk. Whereas in the social model, that person isn't necessarily disabled if they can interact with an environment that allows them to do the same things. So in Second Life, we've been learning how to apply some of those environmental adaptations to allow people to not feel disabled in their environment.